So we will keep our eyes out for the next report and hopefully we get a better idea of what states are looking at, you know, workable days in the fields because this is getting crucial now. We're in mid-April and we're talking about blizzard-like conditions. Um, take a look over here at weather.com. We are talking about another intense low pressure system that could flirt with all time April low pressure records in parts of the plains, according to data compiled by NOAA. Uh, it says that it's not clear the storm will be strong enough deemed as a bomb cyclone since its atmospheric pressure might not meet the meteorological definition of bombogenesis, which is 24 millibar pressure drop in 24 hours. Blizzard warnings have been issued by the National Weather Service from parts of northeastern Colorado to southeastern Wyoming, western and central Nebraska, far northwest Kansas, out there in Norton, Kansas, Almina, Kansas. Uh, Y'all watch out out there. Uh, Goodland as well. Various winter storm watches and warnings and winter weather advisory has also been posted from portions of the northern and central Rockies into the upper Mississippi Valley and the northern Great Lakes. The very UP uh, part of Michigan, by the way, guys. So here is what the radar looked like at 6.30 Mountain Time. And you can see that the system is now starting to ramp up a little bit. Snow and rain, snow in the higher elevations, rain. And here is where we are expected to see this storm rapidly intensifying Wednesday night. And you guys see Rapid City, South Dakota. Uh, now, okay, on the other side of this storm... By the way, we have severe weather to talk about, not just the snow and the blizzard. Uh, the blizzard-like conditions here, this is Thursday. This is where we'll see our storm at its peak. In places like South Dakota, what's already fields that are underwater is going to get the possibility of one to two inches of snow per hour for several hours. So if it's a blizzard watch, there's a possibility we could see six to ten inches in about four hours in this region that doesn't need any more moisture. Same thing with Nebraska. Again, uh, Omaha. More rain. This will start off as rain and turn to um, snow as it moves through. Here's what they're thinking. And no, there's no high elevations out here in South Dakota. So there is a real possibility of two to three feet of snow. In parts of South Dakota, Sioux Falls, you're on that fine line of possibly getting two feet of snow. It's anywhere from five inches to two feet. It just depends on which way this storm um, tracks. Duluth, 12 to 18 inches possible. Minneapolis, same thing. Rapid City, you're right near that two to three feet mark. Parts of Nebraska, looking at an average of five to eight inches, up to a foot in most parts near North Platte. Lighter amounts of snow further east. And this is a big snowmaker for April 15th. In fact, we had a big storm like this last year at this point in time. And I'm pretty sure it was a big snowmaker as well. I don't know if it's going to be as big as this. but So before we go to the severe storm part of this, um, this is our flood situation right now with these rivers. And right there in the yellow where we see current flood statuses, um, or with the, um, I'm sorry, looking at the yellow where the, the moisture is going to be almost the heaviest out of this storm. You see all those purple dots. I mean, we are already in major flooding stages right here. And now tack on a possibility of two to three feet in this region right here of snow. Other areas, minor to moderate. Uh, of course, more major flooding here along Illinois. Missouri, parts of Indiana, central Indiana. Flipping over here to the severe side of this. Let's go ahead and read here. Severe thunderstorms could rumble from parts of the plains to the Midwest, east during later half of the week, ahead of a winter storm, Wesley, which, produced, uh, which will also produce heavy snow and high winds, a strong jet stream, and an intense area of surface low will favor the development of the severe thunderstorms because moisture from the Gulf will be limited compared to what it can bring in the spring, but it might still be sufficient for the formation of severe thunderstorms with damaging straight line winds, large hail, and a few tornadoes. And here's where we're thinking Wednesday into Wednesday night, Sioux City, 
Omaha, Lincoln, Kearney, Nebraska, Hayes, Kansas, Salina, Kansas, uh, near St. Joseph, uh, Missouri, and Des Moines, Iowa. Where that, that's where we're going to see the uh, very likelihood of severe weather. And then we've moved into Thursday into Thursday night. We're going to see severe weather threat in Indianapolis, uh, South Bend, Chicago, Springfield, Evansville, Indiana, and Paducah, Kentucky. And boy, Paducah's had some weather this year. They've been in the news this winter for sleet, snow, ice, you name it. And getting started early with the severe uh, storm front. And as this snowstorm winds down to the northern plains into Canada, more soaking heavy rains will enter the Midwest and the Ohio Valley up into the northeast by Friday, where we could see anywhere from one to two inches of rain in some parts of the northeast. So we're dealing with Wesley dumping a ton of snow in the northern plain states. The winds aren't going to be too friendly either. So you're going to, we're going to be dealing with wind chills, gusts of 50 to 60 in Minneapolis. Uh, Kearney is looking at 40 to 50 mile an hour gusts with sustained winds of 20 to 35. But that area right there uh, near Sioux City, South Dakota, is going to be an area to watch with wind gusts around 50 to 60. Definitely will qualify for a blizzard if that continues for uh, three hours or more. So, <laughs> And this is basically, Wesley is an example of a classic kitchen sink spring storm because we're getting everything. We're getting tornadoes, hail, heavy rain, thunder snow, thunder sleet, thunderstorms, and blizzard-like conditions with a significant amount of accumulation to come over the next several days. And the Grand Solar Minimum Channel, uh, we will definitely be watching the storm and keeping an eye on what it does over the next 24 to 48 hours. All right, let's take a look at the outlook forecast here. The GFS is very, very busy. This is Wednesday, April 10th. We have a system that we are experiencing here in the Northeast that is making its way out of here. Uh, the south is still getting moisture as it takes off and here comes that winter storm wesley across the northwest into the northern plains and boy does this thing get really ugly on thursday and i believe this is where we see the peak of the storm and what i want to point out right here this yellow right by the snow that's areas that we're indicating possibility of thunder snow right in this area plus in this purple area uh, they're also looking at possibility of thunder sleet as well uh, as we continue to watch this snowstorm continue to grow and these bars are tight so you know we're going to see some high winds in this storm but several hours of heavy snow will blanket across South Dakota, uh, Minnesota, and Nebraska. I think you guys are going to get the worst of the storm. The far southeastern part of North Dakota as well will see significant snowfall but this storm system takes its sweet old time and look at this thing. Uh, this actually has updated for Friday, April 12th. Um, before the show, this was what it was showing. Now we are seeing an extremely amount, large amount of moisture here in this region that was not here just a little bit ago. So the GFS is thinking that we're going to see some intense rain shower across the Ohio Valley through Michigan. And uh, as it kind of peters out when it gets towards the northeast, but Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, you guys can see some heavy rain and some flash flooding from that as well. As we get into the weekend, this system moves out, clears out, but here comes our next system in, in Texas, another low pressure system. And the good news about this system is that it gave the South at least four days of dry weather before the next system came through. But this one's going to drop lots of moisture again. So this is where I was talking about this a minute ago, the map of... Um, you know how many days we're talking about the moisture levels and and how it's not going to be dry enough for field work that's that's all they mentioned by the way about field work this little tiny little paragraph right here that's it and they really talk about how some of the crops are doing really good and everything they don't they don't want to talk about i don't know it's just weird they took out a whole map that shows us suitable work days you know they gave a very brief description on what's happening down in the south um but here we have more rain Sunday, April 14th. It doesn't stop here, guys. we got another system coming in from the northwest. This rainstorm intensifies on April 14th through parts of the area that just received massive amounts of rain. That will see more flooding continuing through the weekend into Monday. 
uh, heavy precipitation all across the deep south, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, uh, moderate rain in the Ohio Valley. And by the time this storm moves out on Monday, we're just going to see some moderate to heavy rain in the east coast all the way through the northeast as it'll try to get cold enough for snow to sneak in on the end of this buffalo god lord april 16th you might be looking at snow showers on april 16th the middle of the month and even upstate new york the albany region could see some light snow shower activity as well on october that system moves out and another low pressure system once again uh, the same spot Wesley was in is coming across uh, the central plain. So three days after that big storm in the south, here comes another big storm across the plains in the form of rain and heavy rain. And while that's happening too, the south gets its act together and is pulling more moisture from the, from the gulf. And we are getting more heavy rain within three days after the last heavy rain system. So guys, I mean, this is a repeating pattern every other day one system leaves another one forms in the almost the exact same spot here we are looking at april 26 a very weak low pressure system the gfs is trying to tell us but i mean by the end of this map we're looking at you know heavy precipitation across most of the areas that have seen quite a bit and this is impressive too april 25th the gfs is indicating quite a bit of snow here in the northwest that's got to be overnight and in the upper elevations as well so very active april uh, we are not going to lack any kind of moisture for the northern plains the the midwest and the deep south the ohio valley and, and i hate to say it but really everywhere except for the southwest the four quarter region Cal northern california and the northwest moisture uh, northern plains midwest ohio valley southeast northeast east coast very active April, if you ask me. Now, let's take a look at temperatures. Are we finally going to warm up? I can tell you guys I am ready. It's been a long winter up here in New York, but I've been warned of that. So, taking a look at temperatures, trying to get their acts together here. Um, the south indicating to be a little bit warmer than one stop, but look at that trough, that dump, that drop right there. Uh, this right here, I, I think this is part of this uh, high pressure system that's in Greenland right now that's creating uh, a possible block. And we know when we have these Greenland blocks that we have these deep, sharp um, cold fronts that drop like this. And very sharp, very, very deep. So I think that might be the result of the high pressure sitting around Greenland at the time. And, you know, it goes pretty deep in the south, but this shows that we recover a little bit quicker than once what was thought earlier and, and look at this by the 16th of april well, we're talking average or near above average temperatures for much of the country from the central plains to the southern part of the united states and also ohio pennsylvania by mid-month you guys are going to start seeing a little bit warmer temperatures but most of the middle part of the country still in the 50s and 40s and it looks like we get another drop in cold temperatures late friday april 19th and a warm up across the eastern part of the United States, which I'm circling my calendar right now. So the Easter forecast is looking pretty solid as far as temperatures getting warm. And guys, this is what we look like on Easter this year. Uh, very pleasant weather. Unfortunately, Northwest, maybe not so much, and Montana, the Dakotas, but everywhere else, pleasant, very, very pleasant Easter weather as we move towards the end of April still staying pretty warm indications that we see a weak cold front around the 23rd but really this warmth is now kicking in we are truly into the spring season 60s and 70s more widespread by April 24th as of hoped and look at this some pretty dark red temperatures here 90 degrees in South Carolina if I'm not reading that wrong nope that's a 90 so we are seeing some deep south heat coming up here at the end of April which is about typical for this time of year for them I mean this is the deep south plus if we're gonna have um, a lot of moisture humidity buckle up down there in the south we could see some record heat waves and also some pretty big storms that Gulf moisture so far is being proven to be absolutely huge so far as I'd say from the mid 
part of our country all the way through the east coast and the northeast is getting pummeled along with the northwest but right now we're seeing the focus of a lot of heavy precipitation from the northwest to the middle part of the country into the south and through the east into the northeast i mean that's literally 75 percent of the country right now take a look at el nino is it el no no yet well we still see significant cooling across the three four region and if you look here guys this this is barely 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 staying together here i mean 28 28 is the threshold all right we were seeing 29 27 26 all the way back here uh, not signs of El Nino. Maybe it's down here in this region, but right here still seeing some cooling. Very weak. So what does that look like on the graphs? 0.688 above baseline. So each time we see a peak in the El Nino 3.4, it looks like it's trying to dip down a little bit further uh, lower as far as temps. I could be wrong. Uh, actually... I will take that back. Looking at this graph, it looks about even from the last drop that we had. So El Nino is doing what a weak Modaki El Nino does. And it is right now showing its ass. Clearly. Other than that, guys, I think that's going to do it for me tonight. Mari, did you have anything that you would like to add before we jump off the air tonight? Well, I feel a little bit rusty, Jake. It takes getting used to it getting does. back on and and doing this stuff. You know, I just want to mm. make fun of you like I always do. You know, I know these are your this is your favorite part of the show, Jake. But uh, I wanted our audience, all our viewers, to know when Jake was talking like Captain Kirk. Um, it, that was because he had a really bad itch on his back, and I <laughs> had to get it for him. Jake, you were really seriously like talking like captain kurt it was really like well it was really wow. distracting that you couldn't hit the spot so well i just like i was making i was like making head direction. gestures like will you please <laughs> take your hand further south anyway what else funny. you got for us tonight? okay so enough of making fun of you uh, everyone's awesome talking about prepping you know what they're growing what seeds they're stocking what kind of seeds sharing different resources about prepping everyone seems to be very much concerned about what's going on with our food supply and they should be it is alarming what's going on with our farms right now uh, I'd like to say thank you to Justin L for uh, stopping by and visiting us he gave us a super chat he's super nice and it was good to see him in the chat he hasn't been on much and he just says he needs to be here more than he has been over 40 pirate 1217 also thank you for the super chat very kind we really appreciate uh your i can't talk right now we appreciate you and welcome to the channel um who else is in the chat i don't know a lot of new people there's one uh viewer called 222 mission <laughs> and we're we're we got 222 everywhere don't that's, we Jake? that's our call sign there yeah so Shout Hello out and shout welcome. Out, shout out to Starman, even if he's not watching tonight. Um, he's been in the background, behind the scenes, trying to keep me updated on what's going on. And, you know, if anything, the only thing I like following on Twitter, there's a few people out there. I think they're useful out there. And, and uh, TSM Solar Observations definitely is one of those guys. I will share his link in the chat. Um, he, his Twitter is awesome. He's the best of on Twitter for me. Indeed. Love that guy. So, all right. That's all I got, Jake. Well, thank you very much, guys, for watching tonight. Thank you, Mari, for helping me get through another GSM News event. Guys, we will try to be back on, I think, sometime around Thursday or possibly Friday. Uh, please bear with us as we are still working through the, uh, the kinks and the setbacks that we possibly could have here in the next several days. But so far, so good. Tonight was uninterrupted, like... Unlike the show that we did, was it Friday night or Saturday night? You know, it's all a blur. We've been out without been power on and off intermittently for the past two weeks. <clears throat> we decided to move. The issue right now is working. I guess they're still going to uh, come out and re I guess replace the transformer. There's still work to be done. Yeah, and so. there's all other things. So we found a place we'll be moving, and I can't wait because we'll 
almost, I think, have room for a studio where we could yep. do a green screen. Yep. So stoked Back about to that, that stuff. again. Yep. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in once again. And stay tuned because we will talk soon. Do you like this show? Give us a thumbs up. Want to support us more? Share to your favorite social media platform. Buy a t-shirt or become a Patreon. All links are in the description below.